Hey guys, I know it's a long time since you've had a video. Um, I've been pretty busy doing some house renovations. Um, we're up here just north of Huntsville at a place called, um, well this in particular is Edgewater Lodge. And uh, the area around here, the Canadian Shield, uh, typified by large uh, areas of granite. Uh, however, we're heading towards some pegmatites um, just, just in this vicinity. This is one of the last places we're just turning off uh, the 518 very shortly here and uh, heading off into the uh, rougher roads. Uh, we're going to go to two locations today. Uh, this is myself and my good friend uh, Snafu, as we call him, aka Dr. Mirza. Uh, we're going to the Two Rivers Occurrence, which is in my book, uh, my last book, Geography of Collecting. Uh, we're going to check out Two Rivers Occurrence, which has some really interesting stuff, uh, tantalum in particular which I'm very interested in. Um, and then we're also gonna have a look uh, a bit further on at the Sheehan Beryl occurrence. So apparently there's aquamarine in that particular location. So let's see what we can find. Here he comes now, he's got my coffee. What are we finding here, Mr. Mirza? Dr. Mirza? French joke. Famous, fr um, famous scientist. <laughs> it's true. Okay. I just had to wait. Yeah. Oh, you've ordered French toast. Yeah, yeah. This turns into a good mineral area. This looks like a good place to stay. I can smell the breakfast cooking in here right now. It's about nine o'clock. Little cabins where you can. So okay, here we are. This is this is a big lake here. There's your Edgewater Lodge, where Jeff has got a really wonderful meal of French toast. Um, so this is the first road to the right after you've gone past Edgewater Lodge. These are little like hills. Up here you can see the hills, so we're gonna have one, two, three roads to the left. And I think that one takes us up to the um, graphite mine. And then, very shortly on the right-hand side, there's a stream or a river, and that's the river's occurrence, which is where we have this big, huge pegmatite, um, which we'll describe when we get there. Okay, to the right here, Forestry Tower Road. Um, not a bad road. So we're going to count the hillsides on our left now. We're just kind of scooting along here, along Forestry Tower Road. Um, really scenic. It's on the outskirts of Algonquin Park. So, at a bend in the road, just proceeding where the road forks, on the right-hand side there's a spot to park. You can hear the river, just down there, and there's a little road cutting right over here. This is what they call the river's occurrence. Now, it's a pegmatite, and uh, we're gonna try and find the pegmatite. Guess why they call it the river's occurrence? Because E.J. River discovered it. So we're looking um, for the classic signs of a pegmatite. Um, so what we're talking about large grained crystals. Most of this is not that kind of stuff. Uh, possibly a depression because it's going to wear a little more easily than the rock around. We're talking a seam that's 40 feet wide and about 120 feet long. They say it crosses underneath where the waterfall is, which is up ahead, which may explain why the waterfall formed. Easier wear. So we'll check that out in a minute. Supposedly the uh, pegmatite passes right along through the waterfall but I'm not really seeing it, it looks like a very uh, fine-grained rock so it could be to either side we're gonna have a scour around there um, apparently it's uh, they did a sample I think it was in 1953 they got 9% uranite uh, and 1% um, uh, tantalum which is pretty exciting uh, again we keep looking um, I'm not seeing anything in the debris here either that's, that's, you know, derived from a pegmatite. Jeff's just found this rock here. It's got biotite mica. Um, it's very small flakes of it, the iron mica. That uh, is definitely within the pegmatite and it's not normal to the rest of the rock in the area. See, hard to see underneath the organic staining. This is just solid lump of quartz. You've got smoky quartz under there indicating radioactivity in the area.
that's jumping out at me right now. Quartz, feldspar, reasonably large size crystals, bit of biotite mica. We're definitely getting close to a pegmatite. Here we go. This is our pegmatite. Um, quartz, largest feldspar crystals. Um, you can see this log here. The road's just up there. The waterfall's there. This whole hillside is covered in the debris from the pegmatite. Exactly where it, where it is, whether it crosses the river, not sure yet, but it's in this area. You come here, you're gonna find the tantalum, uh, usually the, the flatter black crystals. Uh, you're gonna find uranite, uh, high proportions of both relative to the other rock. So I'm going up slope from the river and this whole big rock behind me here, big slab, it's just solid quartz and feldspar together. So obviously the, the fissure goes up the hill. It must be crossing here or running parallel, not sure which it is. But uh, as a, for a rock hound, this is definitely a, an interesting spot. Just check this out, eh? Like smoky quartz, um, it's streaked. You've got your feldspar, um, pockets, you know? I can see there's some form of a crystal edge right there. Um, I mean, look at that. Just beautiful patterning on it, right? Um, so this is definitely the river's occurrence heading up the hill. All of the hill behind me, these layers of rock, it's all part of the pegmatite. Um, I'm not sure how high up it goes, but I mean, you start down here, you've got all the debris, the rubble, you've got uh, feldspar exposed, uh, what looks to be small flattened shards of columbite with the tantalum ore. Um, it's what I'm seeing so far. All of that. That's all pegmatite. The river's occurrence pegmatite. I've peeled back all the moss on either side and it's exposing some really beautiful stuff like almost like a graphic granite quartz here but even more densely packed. Um, columbite but I believe is the columbite, the tantalum ore. Um, obviously all this red stuff is feldspar. And down below, you're gonna have huge amounts of debris worth digging through and finding various crystals. Uh, you see these shiny flatter bits are, are the, the columbite ore. Anyway guys, I don't think we're going to spend too long here. Uh, we're trying to head up to a barrel deposit, as I say, the Sheehan barrel deposit today. So we'll see more of that in a separate video uh, a little later, but uh, maybe next week. But for now, we're going to head on. Uh, it's a beautiful spot, well worth coming to. So you can see with the waterfall down here where you are on the side of the hill, there's a the digging and this furrow following up the side of the hill. This is our pegmatite. And I found some real neat stuff. I found uh, a lovely uh, black columbite within the rock itself. And some really cool, and if you can see it, some really cool quartz with the faces exposed. Just dig into here, clear some of the leaves away, and you're onto some real neat rock hound stuff. From the falls, right there, going up the hill. That's where your, uh, your pegmatite is. It's actually really hard. It's not a decomposing pegmatite of any type. Um, my brief experience of it, lots of smoky quartz, definitely some tantalum. I haven't seen any uranite, even though they say it's the 9% of the uh, deposit is uranite, but you can definitely see evidence, evidence of it in the smokiness of the quartz. And uh, when you're done, great spot to have a lunch. Just beautiful. What a river. So this is the Magnetowan River, or at least it joins up with the Magnetowan. Um, I discussed this particular river occurrence in my latest, my third volume of Rock Hound. Uh, the book being uh, Rock Hound of Geography of Collecting. I get some pretty detailed description of the mineralogy and also how to get here. So if you haven't done it already, check out the book itself. We made it into a tea. 
This stuff? Maybe, I don't know. I wouldn't, I wouldn't drink it because I don't know, <laughs> I might poison myself. But. Really intense smell when you rub it. Mm. Yeah.